In this video we're going to have a look at Verilog and giving you a brief introduction about what the language is, what you can do with it, and the fundamental parts of it that you'll need to know going forward. Basically, Verilog is a written language, kind of like code, for design of digital circuits. All right, it's also known as a hardware description language or HDL for short. Important point to remember is Verilog does not generate software. Well, unless you're writing test cases, but that's a little bit different. Generally, it's expected Verilog does not generate software. It generates hardware, i.e. gates. Some nice features about it are things like you can write test benches, which is basically test code or software in Verilog, as well as hardware description. Right, so you can write the hardware, design your hardware on it, and at the same time, then within the same language, write in uh, the test code for it. And importantly, it is used for the design of CPLDs, and even just PLDs, complex programmable logic devices, FPGAs, which is what we used it for uh, in our course, which are known as field programmable gate arrays, which are basically just an evolution of CPLDs, and then right through into ASICs, which are application specific integrated circuits. Now the first two, the CPLDs and the FPGAs, these are generally reprogrammable versus an ASIC which is a fixed design. Right, you pay a lot of money for that, $100,000 or so all right, but then you can basically sell your own uh, integrated circuits, your own chips, really. Whereas the CPLDs and FPGAs, yes, they can be re reprogrammed, uh, but often they're a cheaper alternative than designing an ASIC for a high-speed application. An alternative to Verilog is VHDL. Okay, both have virtually the same functionality, right? at least for the purposes of what we are using it for. All right, so you can use Verilog or you can use VHDL. The advantage of Verilog is that it is more C like. All right. And while that may be an advantage for you learning the language, it's certainly not an advantage in terms of if you think and see, you're going to think software and you're going to think sequential operations. Whereas really when you see Verilog, you should think parallel, all right? And you should think in hardware. So it's, you know, it's a benefit and it also causes problems for people. Uh, and the idea with Verilog is that it is compiled to a 
register transfer level or what's known as RTL description of your hardware and then placed and routed inside an FPGA or whatever your happen to be designed, CPLD or even ASIC that forms part of this. Right, so Verilog has your description, which is then compiled by Cortis or whichever IDE you're using to a lower level uh, description, just like machine code really in a processor, except this is describing how all the uh, gates and flip-flops and everything um, that's required and how they're connected. And then it's actually placed, worked out where it's going to sit within the programmable hardware within the FPGA and then how it's going to be connected together. Right, so that's really a, a brief overview of what Verilog is. Two things I want you to pick up on now are the two main data types in Verilog. The first one is the wire. Okay, and that represents connections between uh, internal circuits, okay, internal hardware. And you can think of it much like a physical wire. All right, so they do not, this is an important point, hold their value. So just like an actual wire, if you apply a voltage to it and then remove that voltage, if you go and measure the voltage on that wire, it's going to be, well, nil, zero, all right, because you've removed it. So they do not hold their value. And a rule that we'll get to is that they cannot be assigned in an always block. But we'll see that when we get through to behavioral code. All right. So wires are used with structural and continuous assignments. The other major data type we have is a reg, short for register. And they behave just like computer memory. And hold their value uh, until explicitly assigned another value. Okay, and assigned always, right, assigned in an always block. Okay, and they represent things like flip-flops, latches, and so forth. All right, so our two main data types, the wire, which is like a physical wire, okay, just for taking signal from one device, call it A to B, okay, it's just a wire, it's just a connection between two devices, it does not hold the value, and you can only create or assign a signal to that uh, within continuous assignment or structural data flow, which we'll see in the later videos, all right, so you can't use it in the always block versus a reg, which is sort for register, which is something like a latch or a flip-flop, something that holds its value, like we saw in the sequential uh, logic video. Right, so it hold, behaves a little bit like computer memory, and it holds its value until explicitly assigned another one. Using wires and regs, we can create arrays or vectors. All right, and the way we could do that is simply by declaring wire, the number of bits, and the name of that variable as such, or that bus. Okay, really, you should probably call them buses. Now, in this case, 1 to 0 means 2 bits. 
So unlike a computer, where you have chars which are 8 bits and ints which can be 16 or 32 and so forth, right, you have to find data type sizes. In an FPGA, you make everything as big as it needs to be. All right? If you only need to store the numbers from 0 to 3, then you can use 2 bits. Right? You don't need to use an 8-bit variable and then waste the remaining bits. Okay, So key point there, use the correct number of bits for your application. All right? Otherwise you're just wasting hardware and wasting power inside your uh, device. In similar fashion, if you wanted to, all right, um, I'll call this one name two, noting that's bad naming strategy there, right, that is an 8-bit register, 7 down to 0. So if you wanted to create 8 bits, that's fine. Obviously there's no signed and unsigned type work being done in here, so you have to handle that by yourself. Uh, unless you specify otherwise. Alright, so when it comes to creating arrays or vectors or buses of wires, you know, and this would look like physically, it's just two wires. Okay, that, that's, that's all it is. This one would be eight registers or eight flip-flops, for example, which can hold their value uh, and then be clocked through. So you can easily create registers. And if you wanted to, you can concatenate Uh, okay, assign, maybe call select equals that, and we define select as 1 to 0, select, for example. Alright, so that's an example of concatenation, but we'll get to that in the continuous assignment video. Last thing I want to have a look at in this video is how to declare numbers. Oh. Alright, Verilog is a little bit different, so if I was to do something like this, okay, that's a 3-bit binary number. Okay, so the first number is the number of bits, that then tells it, the compiler, what, or what number system we're using. Okay, so you can enter it in binary. You could enter it in decimal. Okay, so that would be a 5-bit decimal number. Um, you could enter it in hexadecimal. Um, if you wanted to. If you do not specify, if you were just to go the number, let's say, even if you just went the number 2, okay, so whatever, something equals 2 in your program, 2 is going to be a 32-bit integer, okay, that's the default, so watch out. All right, always, if you can, specify the number of bits. You should always be able to whenever you're designing hardware. Okay, so brief summary, Verilog is a written language for the design of digital circuits, or in other words, a hardware description language. It generates hardware, not software, um, and it's, we're going to be using it primarily for the design of FPGA hardware, so circuits that we're designing inside an FPGA. The alternative is VHDL, but uh, for our purposes, because it's more C-like, we're going to use Verilog. However, watch out when we start thinking in hardware versus software. Two main data types are wires, okay, just physical wires that do not hold their value, and registers, which are like flip-flops, uh, computer memory. You can define buses or arrays of those data types. And you'll need to if you want to be able to store numbers. For example, if you want to store number 3, you can't do that in one bit. These by themselves, wires and reg, are only one bit. One wire could be off or on. You can't store anything else other than 0 or 1 on that. So when we come to define numbers, you'll want a number of bits. All right, A bus or an array of bits. And just watching out that you always should specify the number of bits when declaring a number.